Hi, if even a brief loss of power causes your house alarm to go off, normally in the middle of the night waking everyone up, there's a good chance your backup battery is dead and I'm gonna show you how to fix it if you hang around. If you have a more modern unit, there's a good chance it's already given you an error code saying the battery needs replacing in the main unit or in one of your motion sensors. To fix this yourself critically, you're going to need the installer code, which will allow us to temporarily disable the alarm and to reset any tamper warnings which have been raised by us taking the main unit apart to find out what battery it requires and replacing it. Luckily for me, the technician that originally fitted our alarm wrote the installer's code on the front page of our user manual. If you don't know the installer's code, you might be able to research the default for your particular unit online and hope it works, else you may need to factory reset it. It's worth keeping in mind if you do factory reset it, you may have to recalibrate all of your motion sensing zones again, and this might be more hassle than it's worth. You may need to call a technician. Firstly, we're going to need to disable the alarm so it won't go off while we're sitting right next to it, blowing out our ear. On my unit, this is done by entering the installation code followed by my regular code, but your unit may be different. I've seen some out there where you only have to enter the installation code. This unit indicates it's in installers mode by saying installers menu at the top, though yours may indicate this by using a light if it doesn't have a screen. Now it's time to locate your main alarm box. For me, mine is under the stairs. If you're not sure where yours is, there's a good chance it's not too far from your keypad as they are normally connected by a wire. Before we open the main alarm box, it's a good idea to disconnect it from the electric. Luckily for me, there is an isolation fuse to its left which I can just pull out, but if you do not have this, you may need to disconnect it in your main fuse box. So I'm just going to pull the fuse out now, cutting my alarm off from the mains electric. Now we can go ahead and open the main alarm box. If you haven't put your alarm into installers mode, this will most likely set it off, which for me would be exceedingly loud. But I'm pretty sure I have, so here we go. For me, it's just the two Phillips head screws holding it in at the top. Panel for me folds down and pulls away. For you, it might be different. With the panel off, we can identify the battery, most likely as the largest item in the case, connected to the main circuit board by a red and black wire. I should be able to simply pull the battery out and caring not to touch the metal, disconnect the red and the black battery terminals. With this now out of the unit, we can see it's a 12 volt lead acid battery. This one has one rated for seven amp hours. I would advise you buy one with the same amp power rating as your unit already has. Well, now it'll be time to head down to the hardware store to buy a replacement battery, but luckily for me, here's one I bought earlier. We can see my replacement battery is rated for the same voltage and amp hours as the existing one. I'm going to start by removing the plastic tabs which cover the terminals and I'm going to reconnect the power for the alarm, ensuring that I connect red to red and black to black. So pop the red one in there like that and the black one in there like that. Fantastic. I'm now to be able to slide this battery back inside the unit. Now it's time to reinstall the cover. Mine slides in at the bottom, and then angles up. You can now begin to screw in two holding screws, one at a time, and the second. Once you've replaced the battery and refitted the cover, it's time to turn the electrics on again. For me, this is as easy as reconnecting the fuse but you may have to go and turn it back on in your electric cupboard. Because the alarm was in installer mode, when I reconnected the power and the battery, the alarm did not go off, but if yours does, simply just re-enter the code to turn it off. Also, please make sure you dispose of your old battery responsibly. Now that we've replaced the battery in our main alarm system, it's probably a good idea to also replace the batteries in all of our motion sensors. Before you unscrew one of these motion sensors, it's worth checking that your alarm is still in installer mode, else this will trip your alarm. Now they're normally held in place with one single Phillips head screw, which I'm going to remove now. Make sure you don't lose the Phillips head screw. With the motion sensor off the wall, we can check what type of batteries it uses. If you're lucky like me, you'll be using double A's, though yours may use something more bespoke. With some new batteries on my motion alarm, it's now time to put this back on the wall. I haven't seen this blinking in a while, so I probably should have done this sooner myself. Easy, now it's time to go and do the other three in the house. You notice at the base of every motion sensor, there is a small spring. When you're refitting the motion sensor to the wall, this spring most likely has a special area it houses in so that it knows if it's been tampered with. 
when you re-screw your motion sensor onto the wall, please make sure this is lined up correctly, else your alarm may give you faults when you try and remove the tamper warnings later. To reset the tamper warnings on your alarm is going to be different for every single unit. On this particular one, I sign in as installer mode and on the screen I'm presented a list of all of the tamper warnings. Some of them battery related, which we've caused, and some of them might be external, such as power failures, which would have originally been tripping your alarm. I then go through and I acknowledge all of them and I'm presented with a message saying all faults cleared. To work out how to do this on your alarm, I would suggest going online and finding the original user manual and finding how to reset all the tamper warnings. It will most likely be in the installation section. Here goes. Fantastic. Now that we've successfully replaced the big battery in the main alarm system and all the little batteries in the motion sensors, I'd wait a day or two before I test it with the power turned off because that big battery will require some time to charge most likely. If you have any questions, please ask down below in the comments. And if this video has been helpful to you, please give us a like. Best of luck fixing this for yourself and hopefully the alarm won't be waking you all up in the middle of the night again.